Hey everyone, we are coming to you live with our zookeeper, Amanda. Amanda, say hi to everyone. Hey everybody. So uh, welcome back to Denver Zoo. We just wanna thank you guys for staying with us. Um, although we're closed, Capella here and the other 3,000 animals we here, we, sorry, here we have at Denver Zoo. Wanna thank you for your donations so far. Uh, we are a not-for-profit, so while we're closed, your guys' uh, donations definitely do help us here. Um, we do have our members that we want to thank also as they, uh, let me give Pesci some here, um, they are also helping us out by getting those memberships. So those are also always available if you guys want to go ahead and get those so that as soon as we do open again, you guys can come whenever you want. And um, just to jump in, your memberships will be effective through when we reopen. So even if you donate now and we reopen in April, your memberships will be effective open through the next year. So we appreciate your donations, we appreciate your memberships, and we completely understand. So thank you so much for all your help, everyone. So, so man, for everyone who has heard of our herd before or met them, we're just going to run through them real quick. This is Capele. She's our 26-year-old giraffe, our oldest in the herd. Behind me over here is Heshi. Um, her long name is Heshimu. We just call her Heshi for short. She is 17 years old. And then little Dobby just walked away. He'll probably come back over, but you know him as our three-year-old. And Kapele is Dobby's mom. Um, we had a few questions earlier this morning. And one of them I remember was if giraffes make any noise. And that's a really good question. We actually get that question a lot. A lot of times they don't make noises that we can hear. Sometimes they do. Sometimes it's a chuffing noise, which always um, can kind of change behaviors. Sometimes it's a nice thing. Sometimes it's a not so nice thing. Sometimes it's a get out of my way. Um, if a baby is in distress, sometimes you'll hear a moo. But here at Denver Zoo, we actually haven't had that problem. Even when Dobby was having all of his medical treatments, we uh, never heard him moo. Um, he was actually pretty happy hanging out with us and with mom. Um, sometimes they do it just because they start messing around. But for the most part, we can't hear them vocalizing at all. Um, it's too different of a frequency for our ears to be able to pick up. Sydney wants to know if they ever get timeouts. Do they ever get timeouts? Usually not. So here at Denver Zoo, we base all of our training and our relationship building on positive reinforcement, which means we ask them to do something. We use our bridge, um, which tells them, hey, you did a good job, and we're going to go ahead and give you some treats for it. If they ever say, hmm, no, I don't want to do that today, that's all right. We'll ask them to do something else. Sometimes we have little thieves over here, too. Um, if ever there's any aggression, sometimes we might walk away because we don't want to get hit by that, or we might redirect it and say, we didn't really like you doing that. Can you maybe put your nose on a target instead of doing that? But they don't really get timeouts. Sometimes Miss Capella here likes to be by herself, but that is 100% up to her. And she will actually kind of ask us in her own way to be by herself, but it's not a timeout like a kid would get. Uh, Gracie, eight years old from Grand Junction, wants to know how tall the average giraffe is. Oh, that's a good question. So here at Denver Zoo, our giraffes are kind of short. That seems silly because they're so tall right now. Heshi here is about 15 and a half feet tall. So we're up on our upper deck of our platform right now. So you can see that she's quite a bit taller than that. Capele over here is about 14 and a half feet tall. Giraffes can get up to 19 feet tall, but that would be a male. Um, Dobby's dad was only 16 and a half feet tall, so he may or may not get to be that tall. Now our friends down south at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, their, one of their taller giraffes is over 18 and a half feet tall. I cannot remember his exact height, but he's pretty tall. So tallest would be around 19 feet, but average for girls can be anywhere from 15 to 16 feet. When will Dobby reach full height? Uh, closer to five years old. So he's only about 12, or sorry, yeah, 12 feet tall right now but uh, he's, he's getting up there. Why do they have spots? Uh, for camouflage, and they also help them thermal regulate. So it's pretty cool that if you use a thermal imaging camera on a giraffe, like what the firefighters use to check hot spots in fires, you would actually notice that their spots are a different color than the rest of their body. So one of the theories is it actually helps absorb some of that heat and reflect some of it at the same time. The crazy part is, is babies under the age of one do not have those spots of thermal imaging, and that's why they don't regulate nearly as well. Uh, how long are their tongues? Oh, let's see if Heshi will show you guys. So they're about 18 inches long. So that's from the point of her nose all the way out. Dobby's is still a little bit shorter, and you can see that they're purple because of the sunburn that they would get while they're eating all those leaves and stretching their tongue out. So it's an extra sun protectant. So if you also shaved all this beautiful hair off that they have, 
their skin underneath is also black for that same reason, so that they get extra protection from the sun. How do you tell them apart? That's a fun question. So, Heshi and Kapele, I'm gonna try to get them side by side here, are really good ones to look at. So Kapele has a lot of dark up here, where Heshi's kind of our blonde female. Dobby's still smaller, so he's easy to see. We also have fun marks on them that we can identify. Um, if you actually go to the Facebook app, um, we have identifying pictures on them where Kapele, about halfway down her neck, has a spot that kind of looks like a lobster. Where Heshi, uh, you might be able to see it, on the side over here has the bat signal, almost the perfect bat signal. So if we were calling for Batman, you could just find Heshi. Um, Dobby, when he does get bigger, he actually has some spots inside of his spots. So that is one of our IDing factors also. But again, he's a lot smaller still. How much do they eat in one day? Um, we feed out about a bale and a half, which our bales weigh anywhere from 45 to 50 pounds a day. They each get about 10 pounds of grain and they each get 10 pounds of browse. So they do eat quite a bit. So you won't be able to house them at your house very much because they're, they're expensive to feed. Why are their necks so long? They like to eat the tops of the trees. So we've got our smaller antelope that like to eat the lower parts of the trees. We've got some other antelope like the Gernuk that can stand up on their tops of their legs to reach the next step. And these guys reach the top. So just like your trees at home, it's really good to prune them and have them trimmed and stuff like that. These guys are natural arborists and trim those trees in Africa for them. Erin, we're gonna rotate since the giraffes have uh, walked away from us. Allison wants to know if giraffes are aggressive. Ooh, they're not really aggressive. Um, they will be if they feel threatened with us, typically not. So you might have seen Heshi give me a little bit of a kiss earlier. That is a very sweet thing she does. She doesn't do that with everybody, but we also have to watch her because that could be a precursor for aggression. So um, she was getting a little pushy with me because I wasn't giving her the romaine, but I was also trying to keep her a little distracted. You guys might not have noticed that, but um, we try to keep our boundaries with them so that we don't ever have to put them in a position to be aggressive. Um, they don't usually get aggressive with each other. Again, they do vocalize to each other without us hearing it. Um, you'll see a lot of their actual behavior is telling them that something's scary, you need to come over here, or you need to get away from me, I'm not happy with you, um, before they actually kick or anything like that. We keep our distance from them, so only if we have an emergency or something going on will we go into the enclosure with them. All of our training, again, is protected contact. So there is always something between us and the giraffe, even if it's just a little flat fire hose to protect them from coming into our space. Um, they could still kick us, but again, we watch for those behaviors. Um, so again, we just want to thank you guys for all the donations um, that we are getting, because you are supporting all this. Um, we do have barrier visits that come out and stuff like that. And then in the meantime, we are doing a lot of our own care. Um, that was, I think, I believe another question that we got earlier is what care we do for these guys. Um, Dobby, we worked on his hooves a little bit more this morning, um, and that was just Karen, another keeper, and I doing that. Um, we are trained on basic hoof care so that in between farrier visits, we can actually do some ourselves. All right. Has Dobby noticed that his fans oh, are gone? You know, the zoo is really quiet, guys, and we miss having everybody here. Um, Last week was, I think, a little bit of a shock for all of us. We're so used to having this place be busy and getting to hear everybody and getting to talk to everybody. Um, Dobby was a little wound up yes, or last week. Uh, this week he's definitely calmed down, but we as keepers have been going around, um, keeping our distance, and we also have masks if we're in um, around different animals, including primates. But we've been actually trying to make a point of going around and seeing everybody else's animals so that they're still used to seeing their people. Um, we keep kind of joking that Dobby misses his fan club because that first day of having no guests here, he was definitely a little worked up and didn't quite understand why it was so quiet. Um, as you see though, he's still hanging out watching us. He's been uh, following anytime any staff member walks by, whether that's us keepers, whether it's Christina with her camera to get some more Facebook Live videos, or even when the maintenance guys drive by or walk by, he's definitely interested in them to see who his people are and where everybody's at. All right, what are those bumps on their heads for? So, giraffes have a kind of different anatomy. So they are closely related to the okapi, which are their cousins, and they're the kind of shorter looking, everyone thinks they're giraffe and zebra mix, but they're not, they're related to these guys. They're two what look like horns are called ossicones. So they are made out of bone, similar to an antler, but they do not shed them like a horn would. So they're actually called ossicones. 
So they are used for fighting. Uh, males will do something called necking. Um, it's kind of like playing twister with your buddies where you wrap your neck around and hit the other side only for males. So there are two ossicones and then they have another one in the back. So when they're hitting each other, they don't get hurt and it protects their brain just a little bit more. All right, how do giraffes sleep? Uh, for the most part, they sleep standing up. So these guys all do lay down at night. Um, they don't sleep for very often, usually 20 minutes at a time, um, not very long at night. Uh, laying down is a very vulnerable position for them. So a lot of times they're standing up similar to a horse. If they do lay down, especially not here in a control setting where they know that there's no predators coming, um, they'll all lay down together. But otherwise, usually they have a guard watching so that if something comes up like a lion, they can jump out of the way and uh, be safe. And four-year-old four-year-old Ruby wants to know where they sleep. Do they have a nest? How to like what? What's their bedrooms That's a look good like? Question. So here at Denver Zoo, they sleep inside the barn. Um, Dobby will actually like to lay out in our mulch pile because it's very squishy. So we provide places for them to lay. That's a little softer. Um, the rest of our dirt out here is actually special granite in it. But then inside our building, the floor is actually padded and has shavings on it. So it's really squishy and really nice for them to lay on. Out in Africa, they're savanna animals. So you'll see them out in the nice deep grass and laying down out there. But again, that's why you need to have them where they can kind of see because that savanna grass can get really tall. So they always have that lookout out there so that they can see over those tall grasses. Four-year-old Tate wants to know what, if they have any toys to play with. They do. So outside we have all sorts of different toys and from this vantage point you can actually see some. We have some in our planter in the middle. Um, we have some hanging up and we have spinners. Silly little things even like our sticks right here. You can see how there's chunks missing from it and that's from all the giraffes chewing on it. So even something silly as a stick for giraffes is really enriching because they like to use that tongue for everything. You guys can see Dobby's actually trying to take my tools as we speak. He's trying to grab my little ID card right now. Um, so even we are enriching. Um, we give them balls. He has a giant ball that he likes to kick around. Um, we have a wind chime that they all seem to really actually enjoy. They like to rub their heads on, um, lick and play with. Sometimes we'll rub smears on the walls. We've done chalk on the ground for them. All sorts of fun stuff. Uh, Lenny wants to know why their tongues are so long. Their tongues are so long so that they can get around the acacia sticks. So the acacia trees in Africa have really, really sharp and long spines on them. And those tongues are able to reach up and grab just the leaves and not get hit with those spines on the acacia trees. Aw, four-year-old Giselle wants to know if they like to cuddle. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. So they don't, they're not true cuddlers, but you will see them grooming each other and rubbing on each other. Um, one of our favorite little things that especially Kamele and Dobby like to do is she'll go and it looks like she's checking on him like a mom would go check on her baby. Um, she'll go over and lick him. She doesn't do it as much anymore, but cuddling not so much. Um, they will sleep near each other, but the way they have to get up and get down, it's really kind of awkward for them to be able to um, quote unquote cuddle. Uh, uh, Renata wants to know whether, what are their specific heights? So Dobby, last time we weighed, or sorry, last time we measured him, he was 12 foot three inches. Um, Kapele, so Kapele and Hashi are a lot harder because the tape measure was a little scary. So um, we got a very close measurement, but Kapele is right around 14 and a half feet tall. And then Heshi is right around 15 and a half feet tall. Um, Dekebe was 16 and a half feet tall. And like I said, the Cheyenne mountain giraffes can get up to about 18 and a half, 19 feet, which as comparison, if you can see in the background, our tall red doors over there are 18 feet tall so if we had a taller giraffe they would have to duck to be able to get in all right wow we have a question from sweden oh that's cool why are the head why are their eyes on the side of their heads so a lot of prey animals have si eyes on the side of their head because they need to be able to see all the way behind them so if you get right directly in front of them it's a lot harder for them to see them and that even includes horses so next time you guys get to come out and we are open, we actually have these really cool things, we call them rhinoculars. And all it is is a PVC um, pipe that's at a 90 degree angle with mirrors in it. And when you look in it, you're actually looking off to the sides. And it's to be able to give you the vision of what a giraffe looks like. So even if they're looking forwards, they're not usually looking at you. Um, you can also follow their ears. So you can kind of see where they're looking just by watching where their ears are going. So Kapele, although she's looking straight ahead, She's also listening to us to see if we're doing anything or if I'm gonna call her over if we magically get some food. Sophia, age seven, wants to know what Dobby's favorite treats are. Oh, Dobby, he loves everything. So 
we feed him romaine, apples, carrots, um, these primate biscuits that are banana biscuits, but they're made for any of the leaf eating animals. But his all time favorite, and it was because his mother liked them, is parrot food. Um, so he can't have too much of it. We do have a nutritionist who tells us what they can have and what they can't have. Um, when Capele was sick with um, an illness, because she's an older giraffe, and she was pregnant with Dobby, we had been feeding her that to get her medication. Once Dobby was born, we were still feeding it to her, and he would steal some of it. And uh, ever since then, he still loves it. So whenever we really need to get him to do something, so blood draw behavior, which is really hard for them and might be a little scary, we bring out that parrot food, and usually that gets him excited to be able to do it. Carissa wants to know if they're soft. Oh, they're so soft. They're also oily, so you can't see it as much on my hands, but since I was just rubbing on Dobby's head, you get very oily. So it's a very black oil um, that comes out, and that is another protection for the sun and from um, bugs and stuff like that. So when they get wet, it'll start to excrete, but they really also don't like getting wet. So again, we just want to thank you guys all for joining us today and all of this time and um, any of the donations you guys are giving us is great and we do greatly appreciate it. You're helping us stay here and helping take care of all these animals, all these 3,000 animals here at Denver Zoo. Yeah, we are a nonprofit, and even though we're closed, we are staying, we are still here, we are still taking care of these animals, we're still bringing you this amazing content. So we know it's hard, but anything you can spare, we really appreciate. Amanda Manti wants to know if you have a favorite. Oh, no, you can't, you can't say that. So I do have different personalities that I love. So when I first started here, Capele was one of my tops. Um, she's very friendly. She actually like butt scratches in the morning So she'll line up at the bars and allow for butt scratches and she'll actually solicit for them but When you have Dobby show up and all the care we put him through and all the stuff we've done with him. It's really hard um, He's so lovable, but his mother was lovable um, You know Dikembe his late father was my first giraffe I ever trained and he taught me so much that you know, I can't miss up on him and then Heshi is just our silent little sweetheart who she is coming out of her shell a lot lately um so with all of their personalities it's hard to say if i actually have a favorite yeah, we've got a lot of questions about how dobby got his name because <laughs> we're harry potter fans of course so when capele was hiding her pregnancy from us um we didn't know because she was on birth control so after the 14 months of her being pregnant she had gained 100 pounds and i don't if you guys remember i just said she was also sick she had lost about 200 pounds during that illness um with everything we had tried we actually even did a full procedure on her to see what was wrong with her we found out she was calcium deficient so we started her on a calcium treatment which she's still on and doing amazing um, but in that time because she had lost the weight she started gaining and we got really excited we were like yes she's finally gaining weight everything we're putting forth is finally working well we had started seeing some other physical signs but again because she was sick we were really worried it was her sickness not anything else because she was on birth control um so another keeper asked some other questions i did some research found out that they had bread because i remember that but the birth control was covering it then I walked out to get something out of the yard and lo and behold, Capele walked in front of me showing me that she had a full udder just like you would see on a milk cow and they were fully, fully developed, meaning she was going to give birth soon. So um, we prepped that moment and got her ready. She had gained 100 pounds, but we knew he was going to be really little because that wasn't quite as much pounds as a normal giraffe pregnancy would be and with how sick she was, we were really concerned about that baby. So as our little superstition and our team is we don't name babies for 24 hours after birth just to kind of give them a little more hope and so that we don't get um, ahead of ourselves pretty much. So we had a name Dobby in there because, you know, we needed a tough name. If this baby survived, we needed a tough name and we figured Dobby was the perfect one for that. And when he came out with those big ears, it was perfect. All right. We have so many questions. All right. How fast can giraffes run? About 25 to 30 miles per hour. And do the giraffes ever not want to do their medical care or what's expected of them? And, and what happens if they don't, if they don't want to do it? Yeah. So, um, these guys are all pretty healthy right now. Even Capele is doing great. Um, so we have been practicing a lot with them. So Dobby gets practiced with his hoof care, whether we actually do something or not, we just pretend we're doing it just to keep him happy. And again, he's getting so much reinforcement for doing that. He loves to participate in training. Heshi, we're getting her started, but right now she doesn't need any medical care, but just in case we need to, we get her prepped.
Pele, we're having to work a little differently around. We've found a lot of things that since she's an older giraffe, we have figured out that she's a little bit more claustrophobic, so she doesn't like a little bit of the other stuff that the others do. So we're working around that and that's fine. We're going a little slower with her. If one day she says she doesn't want to train, which actually today she was standing outside and decided she didn't want to train, that's fine, we'll train tomorrow. Um, if they are ever sick enough like a Pele was and do not want to participate, we have other ways of doing it. Our device back there that we were actually able to pay for with donations from you guys um, is the SNUG. It's the Snape Nurturing Upright Gateway for Giraffes. So that is where our scale is and that device is actually made so that we can squeeze a giraffe down, which again they are trained for so that it is not a scary device. Um, and they can get used to it. So again, Capele does not like it being in there. So should we put that fire hose across so that it's not closed in there? It will work her in there. Um, Dikembe was actually able to get some treatments in there as well. So that device, even though we don't need to use it all the time, we do work them so that they're comfortable in there. And if they're not wanting to train because they really just don't feel good, but we need to get some blood from them, we're able to use that device without having to sedate them or do anything more um, invasive. All right, what are some common health concerns? Um, that you that you look for? Um, so their feet can be one of the bigger ones. So because giraffes weigh anywhere from Dobby being 1,400 pounds to Heshi being almost 2,300 pounds, their joints can start to um, kind of take effect in their feet. So that's why we take care for their feet the most um, because we want to make sure they have even wear and tear. So that's why we brought in the special dirt so that as they're walking, it does its job for them. Um, but overall, they're actually pretty healthy. And one of my things I kind of like to say is they're really easy to take care of until they're not. So prey animals like to hide everything from us and don't tell us anything until it's pretty much time to make some big decisions. So that's why we try to preemptively do it. So Dobby has already had multiple blood draws so that we can make sure his blood is still healthy. Um, and again, checking his feet, have the farrier comes out, um, the vets come out and check them just to make sure we're not missing anything. Um, and that's, you know, I always say that we're here to um, be there their spokespeople to let the vets know that if anything's wrong and we get a good look at them every single day to make sure that everything's good. All right, eight-year-old Sophia wants to know how much they weigh. So Dobby here weighs 1,400 pounds. He's about 1,466, I believe was his last weight. Heshi was uh, 2,280, I believe was her last weight. We just weighed him last week. And then Capele is right under 1,600 pounds. We just asked a question if Dobby is spoiled. No. Dobby is definitely not spoiled. Um, he, he's pretty <laughs> spoiled. <laughs> um, he has definitely won over all of our hearts and even non his keepers. So we have a few keepers that actually just come and visit him. Um, we can't tell him <laughs> no because he's so cute. So um, he gets away with a lot with us. We actually have to make sure some stuff's not on us that if he decides to start playing with us, we have to remove some stuff just so we don't want him getting hurt and stuff like that. But we love how curious it is. That actually helps us with our training because he's willing to do stuff even if it's scary just because the reinforcement of us being around and of his food is really high. All right, what's your favorite part of being a zookeeper? Um, getting to know the animals and getting to hang out with them. That's, that makes it all worth it. Like we're here, um, you know, we go through everything with them. We're here with them eight hours every single day, 40 hours a week. Um, you get to know their personality, they get to know you. Um, people ask us all the time if they actually know who their keepers are. Um, so we all kind of jingle the same. So our keys kind of make the same jingle. Um, but you'll see them, they'll, they'll hear a keeper coming, they'll look out, see who it is and see if it's their keeper or not. Um, they can identify us outside of our zoo clothes and without our keys. Um, they know our voices. So you guys might call Dobby over and he might look at you, but if one of us calls Dobby, he definitely knows who his keeps, keepers are and that we usually have food with us. Uh, we got a question how they communicate within themselves. Um, so a lot of it's body language, but they do have um, a, a voice that you and I just cannot hear, but they can hear amongst themselves. So one of the best ones I ever saw was um, at one point Capele was kind of far away, kind of actually where she is, and Dobby was in what we used to call his playpen. So he would hide underneath there. See, he's going to see his fans. <laughs> um, and a service dog walked up front. So as these guys are prey animals, service dogs can sometimes be a little intimidating to them because they don't see carnivores that much. It's silly living in a zoo, but you know, they're in an enclosed area that a carnivore is a carnivore. And since Dobby was sleeping over here and she was letting him rest, 
she got very big and very tall and Dobby jumped up and ran over hidden behind the behind her and the rest of the herd. We heard nothing, but obviously she made some sort of announcement that there was danger in the area and he got up and ran to her. Besides giraffes, what's your favorite animal? Uh, horses. So I work with the Shavalsky horses. Um, we call them P horses for short because that name is kind of long and it starts with a P even though it's Shavalsky. Um, and hopefully we'll get to go meet them here at some point during our closure so you guys can introduce to them. But um, they've got a unique story. So I work with horses at home as well. And obviously I'm a hoofstock girl through and through. Uh, Sydney wants to know how you became a zookeeper. Uh, kind of a weird story. Um, I was actually training with the Denver Fire Department before I got hired here and was getting my degree in biology and did not actually want to fulfill that career. So I switched. Um, and when I was little, I wanted to be a marine biologist, so it wasn't that far off. Um, and got an internship here and after two years of being an intern and getting to work with hoofstock, with pachyderms, with sea lions, with carnivores, um, hoofstock definitely stuck with me. So I pursued it and was able to get a job here and have been here for 13 years now. We're getting a question if Dobby has any brothers or sisters. Oh my goodness, he has so many brothers and sisters. So none of them live here anymore. Um, Dikembe, Dobby's dad, actually had um, 20 babies so we have had a lot of calves move here through here and that's actually why Capele was on birth control because Dikembe had quite a few babies so he has 19 brothers and sisters all over the United States they want to know what their favorite snack is in general lettuce lettuce and their brows so their brows they get every single night and it's mostly an acacia leaf we get it shipped in from um, Cal or so sorry from Florida and that's actually part of what your donations are um, helping us fund is some of those other things where they don't need the brows every single day. Um, it's definitely good for them because it's their natural food, but we do offer them alfalfa, which is their main diet. Um, part of those donations do go to being able to get that brows from Florida to here while we don't have any leaves yet. All right, how long do they sleep a day? Not very long. They sleep 20 minutes at a time um, for anywhere between an hour to two hours. All right, we just got a lot of thank yous, lots of I loves you for, for oh, Dobby. Thanks, everybody. We, we do love you guys. We miss you. Um, hopefully this will all end soon. We're all taking our precautions. Um, you'll see we have some visitors walking around right now. Um, hopefully we'll be able to open again soon. We do want to thank you guys again for all the donations. All, every single one of them, since we are not for profit, um, helps us keep running and keep our guys going. And by visitors. Amanda means staff. They've come Perhaps. to see Dobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What What are Dobby's favorite enrichment items? Um, he definitely likes his mirror and the um, wind chimes. He will play with his ball. We have a giant mega ball, which is um, maybe three feet tall. Uh, he'll kick that around some, um, but he definitely likes to chew on the sticks too. You'll see him especially messing with the sticks here up on the feeding platform um, quite a bit. Uh, and to Susan, who's asking why there are visitors here, they're not visitors, they're, <laughs> they're staff. Yep, they're staff acting like visitors. We don't have any visitors here. Um, they are just staff members. We're trying to walk around and keep the animals engaged, and um, they're definitely noticing a lack of guests. Um, so you'll just see random employees walking around, taking our breaks, and getting the animals some attention. All right. All right, guys, I think we are finishing up. We just want to thank you again. And again, all those uh, donations that you guys are pushing in really does help us and it means a lot to us. So thank you again from our three giraffes here at Denver Zoo and the 3,000 animals that call Denver Zoo home. So thank you guys. Bye.